of Weber's jewelry making tools. Today I'm going to show you how to make the bow tie chain. Now to get started on this beautiful chain you'll need a few tools. You're going to need two chain nose pliers, the Weber's parallel pliers, I'm using this, this small size in this video for this chain. You're going to need some flesh cutters, that, uh, shears that cut flesh on each side. These are the Lindstrom shears. And I'm going to be using 20 gauge wire. To actually make each link, I'm going to be using Argentium so that we can fuse it. You can use Sterling if you'd like, but you'll have to solder. I'm going to be using Argentium. And then I'm also going to be doing these wraps with copper 20 gauge wire. And then you're also going to need some copper jump rings. These are 18 gauge round 4 millimeter that I'm using. So let's get started. I'm going to set our necklace off to the side. Um, as we go along too, you, as we get into the soldering, you will need a well ventilated area. I'm going to use a solderite board. Um, you can use your solder bricks if you have fire bricks. Uh, you're going to need a pair of tweezers, a quench pot, and a torch. I will be using the Burnzomatic Matte Pro. And then also make sure you have some safety glasses. I'm going to be putting mine on right now. So what we're going to do is start with our 20 gauge Argentium and we're going to form these links. Now the nice thing about these parallel pliers is you can lock them into place. So I actually have, I could make the links real small and lock them into place if I wanted but I'm going to set these all the way apart. So I'm going to let those come all the way to the end. Okay, now I'm going to take my 20 gauge Argentium. This is why I like this. I can work directly off the roll. And I'm just going to start by getting a grip on that those parallel pliers. And I'm going to start wrapping around. Be sure that my wraps, I'm going to work towards the inside of the jaw. So I'm going to start wrapping down like so. Now the nice thing about these parallel pliers as I wrap, since I'm working down towards the jaw, if I'm going to be making tons and tons of these links, I can always give a little squeeze, loosen, let go, and I can continue. Now I want to show you though, I'm going to put these back on here because I want to show you how easy this is if you leave it on the row, how easy it is to get consistent size links for our chain. So I'm just going to continue wrapping. Now I want to show you, I can cut directly on these pliers with my shears. I don't have to worry about holding all those links tight. They're done for me. So I'm going to take my shears through here and I'm just going to snip down the middle. And you can see I have all these links and they're just going to, I'm going to squeeze and they're just going to slide right off. So here's all my links. Now this is one I've kind of started. I haven't finished it out. I wanted to just have it for reference. So actually to make these links, I'm going to now, we're going to get ready to solder each link. So what I'm doing is pushing those ends together. If this oval loses its shape a little bit while you're doing this, it's okay. I'm going to show you how we can get that nice rounded oval and consistent every time. So now since we are going to be fusing these shut, we have to make sure both ends meet when we're doing this. And that's why these double-sided flush cutters are so important because they're going to make sure that those two ends really meet together well. So what I'm doing is I'm working on connecting these and I'm just going to do a couple so I can show you. And you can kind of see how it works as we hold the torch to the Argentium. I want to give you several chances to see how that glows and how it works. We're going to get a nice orange glow and that's going to tell us to back away and you'll see it fuse together. But I want to make sure we have enough of these and I, you know what, I'll do one that is not touching so you can see what happens if I don't get those touching, okay? So I'm going to move these out of the way. I'm going to get my solderite board. Okay, now we need to remember this is the one that's not touching. Let me make sure this is in the screen before we get going. Now, I think this is going to be better. I got going and I realized I couldn't turn, so I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Now again, to start this torch, I'm just going to push this red button. I'm going to point this away from the camera. <laughs> push this red button, lock it into place with the silver. Now, 
I'm going to start heating this. You're going to see a red glow. And I'm watching that joint right there. And there it goes. It's already going together. Now if I overheat this, Argentium fuses very quickly. If that gets that big red glow, remove your flame because you're going to melt it. So moving on to the next one. Again, that joint is right there. I'm going to watch it closely. There it goes. Just give that a little wiggle. Next one over. I'm going to wait for that red glow. There it, oh, there it goes. You know what? That one was not touching. I did not get that one touching well. So let me, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over my quench pot. Now, Argentium, you have to give it time to cool. If you remove it too quickly, it can shatter. Let me see about this one. I would expect this one to shatter, because I'm removing, but it didn't since I'm moving it so quickly. But I did not join those two ends, so that's why it is not soldered. Now I'm going to quench this one. This is a nice, good one. This one I want to double check. I thought I saw it go. I'm working kind of far away from the camera. So I'm just going to give it a tug, and it works real good. And you'll notice when I put it on my pliers that when I'm forming it, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you don't have these uh, joints soldered well, they're going to break apart. Now, since I accidentally um, had that one not touching, I am going to do this one touching now, and I'm going to fuse it so we can have another one to work with. So I'm going to push this red button. And the silver. Watch for that red glow. Now, get my quench pot. I'm going to give this a little time to cool. Again, these are the two that um, did fine. I'm just going to quench them one more time since I had them on a hot surface. But let's go ahead and pick this one up. We'll quench it. And I'm just going to tug on it, make sure I got it. And I did. Now, I'm going to set this to the side. Make sure, always make sure this could be very hot. So I'm going to kind of stabilize this with these tweezers. Make sure it's not too hot. And I'm going to pull it over here. Okay, now, I want to show you how easy this is to get these links now that we've done this. Great thing about Argentium is I do not have to pickle this. This is going to be nice and shiny. I'm not going to get the, um, the flame uh, is not going to make marks on it. Okay, now, we have these locked into place, so I'm just going to slide my link right back, I'm squishing together, sliding that back on there, and then I'm gonna pull as taut as I can, these pliers, and that's just gonna make sure that that oval is nice, nice, nice oval. See how that works? See how this one next to it is a little wonky? So I'm gonna put it on here, pull these nice and taut. Look at that. And I'll go ahead and do this last one. Normally, if I was doing this, I'd do them one at a time and go ahead and finish each, each link before I did it. And that one wanted to go all the way to the bottom. There we go. So we have three now. So what I'm going to do is show you how we get this wrap. And we're going to work on these jaws. And what we're going to do is I've got this nice oval. And I'm just going to push in the middle. Just like that. And that's where we're going to wrap. Now again, we have this 20 gauge wire over here. This is copper, 20 gauge. You can wrap with argentium if you want and keep the same color. I just wanted to show the contrast so maybe you can see the work a little better. And I like mixing my metals quite often, honestly. So I'm gonna, I have a loose wrap going around there. I just started out loosely. Now I usually stabilize these pliers against my body. Since I'm working for you guys, it's gonna be a little more challenging because I'm not, stabilizing. I'm going to cut off my extra. I know I'm not going to need that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other chain nose and now that I have that first wrap I'm going to get it centered where I want a little to the left because I'm going to do three wraps. And again I usually stabilize these against my body, okay? So I'm pulling that tight. Now I'm going to come around and this is why I like these chain nose because I can just get in there really nice and I'm just wrapping that around. Again I stabilized. <laughs> now, I want three wraps on each link. I can tell I went a little to the left because I wasn't stabilized. If that happens, I can just kind of push this down. I don't normally have that happen when I'm working in my lap. 
And so I'm just gonna make sure, I wanna make sure that my wraps end up on the back side each time. So now that I've got my wraps done, I do have extra wire down here. And what I'm gonna do is give this a light squeeze. You don't wanna distort that shape, but just give a light squeeze and you can slide this right off. Now, you're gonna want some cutters and come on the back side and just trim off your extra there. And trim, and they're still sticking up a little bit. I do that on purpose so I can come in and make them nice and flat. I just move that wire down nice and flat. Then if you want to squeeze it together, you can, but these, this makes gorgeous, perfect link. Let's do another one. So I squeeze, slide that jump ring on there. Again, remember if I was doing this, I wouldn't have pulled it taut yet, so now I'm pulling it taut, nice and tight. Squeeze in the middle, and again, if you do not have that soldered, you will know, because when you squeeze that tight, it will break on you if you don't. So I'm gonna do a wrap around, a loose one. Gonna take my chain nose over here, cut off my extra, set this to the side. Get my other chain nose. Again, I would normally have this stabilized. So I like, when this is stabilized against my body, I like to pull both of these tight and get it nice in place. It's a little challenging uh, working this way. So I'm gonna, and I do wanna move that wire down to where I want it. And then I'm gonna pull this one around with these chain nose. I'm having to stabilize with my hand, but normally I would have my chain nose on that other side. I'm gonna direct that wire where I want it to go. Now I have three wraps. There's my extra wire, I'm gonna give it a little squeeze, slide that off, trim off my extra. And they're sticking up like I want them to, so I'm gonna come in, push them down, make that nice and flat. Squeeze them together if you need to. And there we go, there's two of them. We'll go ahead and do a third one. Again, squeeze, put your link on there, pull tight, squeeze in the middle. Get your copper wire. And I can tell, you know, I got that really tight, so I'm gonna squeeze these just a little bit so I can squeeze that together a little bit more. Do a loose twist around the copper. Trim off your extra. Oop. I'm gonna hold over here, hold over here and pull. And again, I'm not stabilized against anything, so you've gotta stabilize that against your body. I'm using my hand. Um, I just usually have these sitting in my lap and it doesn't hurt like I'm just letting them have a nice place to stay even and tight. So there we go. Got those. I'm going to give a little squeeze. Trim off my extra. And squeeze that down. And it is important to squeeze those ends down because if you're if that's the bottom, you don't want any rough edges scratching you anywhere. So it is important to squeeze those down. And also, to get this nice finish, what I would do now is stick this in the tumbler. Actually, what, not what I would do now. I would go ahead and join these with jump rings. So I'm taking a jump ring, twisting it open. This is my, I can tell this is my nice side that doesn't have the uh, wraps on the back of the wraps. So I'm going to line my nice side and then I'm going to take this nice side and you always touch what sides you want to be the front. So that's going to be the front to the front. Even though the back is showing, I know that the front is to the front. So when my bracelet's done, it's going to come out right. Twist those shut. Always twist. Never pull apart or push. You're going to twist. Then we'll join our next link. So again, here's my front. The back is over here. So I have the front. I'm going to take the front of this one, 
and make sure it touches the front of that one when it's on that jump ring. Then I'm going to twist these shut. And there you go. Now, here's what I would do at this point. You can see that this one is a little shinier. That's because I've run it through the tumbler. So this one's nice and shiny because I've run it through the tumbler. And what that also does is get any rough edges off from where you wrapped on the back. It's just a really smooth, beautiful finish. And so you can see the difference to where this one's kind of been fired. It's a little more matted finish. And this one's the tumbled. Now what I like to do after I tumble this, I would assemble this all together. And what I did for this necklace here is I dipped it in the patina after I got it tumbled. So I don't know if you could even see a difference between that, how that nice patina, after I got the patina on it, I went ahead and tumbled it again and used a polishing cloth, kind of wiped it down, tumbled it again, and it's just that beautiful finish. So this really is a simple chain. Um, it makes a nice, you know, it looks really nice when you're talking about adding a little extra flair to your pieces. Beautiful addition. Thank you for joining me to learn how to make the bow tie link. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at WoversU.com and like us on Facebook.